Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Spiritual OT channel. channel and um, to be here to listen to another really inspiring interview for the neurodiversity empowerment movement, I am so thrilled to be joined by Zara Celine, who has her beautiful business, Zara Celine Intuitive. Zara is a trauma therapist, and she's also a feminine mysteries facilitator, which I'm super excited to learn more about. Um, and Zara has a really beautiful story about um the way that neurodivergence has been discovered in her life. So thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you, Steph. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, so as always, I like to get started by asking people just to tell me a bit about them, like who are you and what lights you up and what gives you meaning? Yeah, yeah. Ah, just feeling into that question because, yeah, it comes from my heart, who I am. Um, what lights me up is helping women to feel themselves and feel things deeply and be um, uh, allow themselves to really take up space with their feelings and their thoughts and their opinions and all the things that make them authentically them. So... Yeah, when you say that, like that's, you know, that's who I am. That's what lights me up. You'll find me um, in my spare time, you know, researching um, uh, trauma therapy and, you know, anything spiritual. And um, you'll also find me around the community occasionally singing and, and things like that because that's what lights me up too. So, um, yeah, just spreading the feels, man. <laughs> mm, I love it so much. That's what I'm all about. Mm. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about what it means to be a feminine, what is it, mysteries facilitator? Mm, yeah, sure. So a feminine mysteries facilitator is really about getting back to those old kind of ancient ways, right? I'm sure you've heard about the women used to gather, they used to, you know, go into the red tent every month and um, they used to come back with wisdom and intuitive guidance and um, yes. And I really feel like we've, we've lost a lot of that. You know, mm -hmm. we've lost a lot of that culture. We've lost a lot of that tradition. My my family is Celtic, um, you know, and a lot of the Indigenous um, Celts used to be really connected to the land and mm -hmm. they used to have this as part of their culture. And um, I'm really passionate about bringing that back. And I believe that, um, you know, culture and bringing back culture has a lot to do with um you know, a lot of the mental health that we're seeing in the world as well, if we can bring that back and bring back a lot of the traditions, we'll, we'll be able to help um, facilitate growth and healing for so many. And so, you know, I'm passionate about particularly women and helping women to reconnect to that part of themselves that feels things deeply and ultimately moves with the stars and the moon, right? Like, you know, we all feel it. Like, and it's not just women, but I am passionate about working with women because I'm a deeply feeling woman, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, every month we feel the moon and its influence and we just don't know how to kind of bring the intuitive guidance because that part has been lost, the mystery has mm -hmm. been lost. So this is about returning and reconnecting and um, reconnecting to ourselves as intuitive beings ultimately. I love that. That just, mm. oh, I can like feel that in my being. It really like resonates with me. Mm. Um, and so that is beautiful. And do you run like workshops with women or like group um, things with women? Yeah. So I've just launched a Women's Circle. I'll be doing that probably monthly. Um, I was really guided to do it on the dark moon because that's ultimately the space, right, that most women in today's society will kind of, you know, whether it's in their own internal cycle or whether it's the lunar cycle, they'll feel really um, disconnected ultimately because, you know, they'll have feelings and they'll, 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 there might be shame involved with the feelings, right? So we kind of isolate and we're like, I just need to hide. I just need to be by myself or in these fields. But, you know, we used to like feel that energy and then we'd gather and we'd co-regulate, right? And we would 
um, you know, bring about the magic together and feel it and see each other and hear each other and feel each other and dance in that. So um, that's what, you know, I was guided to do, kind of bring back that magic for Dark Moon. And and it is really about embodiment. It's about co-regulation. It's about nervous system work. I bring in my trauma stuff, you know, so that we can create that space, right? Because we can't just feel all the feelings naturally because we come from a society that doesn't really, um, you know, doesn't really kind of, create space for that so we need to kind of do that slowly so that's where my trauma informed and trauma qualified background kind of comes in and so that's what I'm, I'm really guided to facilitate so um so yeah you'll kind of catch me monthly at the moment at um Bonio on the revillaging project I'll be holding them in the dark moon I would love to have the sisters gather if you feel drawn let's do this you know um and yeah uh, I've got a few other things in the works as well so um, that I haven't launched yet but yeah there's lots coming so it's exciting sounds time. amazing and I think yeah. you know this process of rediscovering oneself is such a big part of you know when you discover your neurodivergence or whatever it is and I, I think having knowing that there are spaces like this and communities mm-hmm. and you know women's circles and spa- like just all these things that are out there that people can connect to where they can find their tribe I think is so powerful so yeah um, yeah, I'd be really keen to see if there are any other women mm. who are listening to this or, you know, who are um, within the Facebook community as well that would love to get involved because I think I would love to myself. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so I know you have a beautiful neurodivergent daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, would you be comfortable sharing with us what that journey has been like for you in discovering that for her and then, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, working with that? Yeah, of course, of course. Ah, oh, the feeling questions. <laughs> oh, it was such an emotional journey, as you know, um, I'm sure any mother can can relate, you know, to always kind of feeling like there was something um I want to choose my wording right, because you know, um something different, okay, about my daughter and you know, um yeah kind of just having that intuition you know like that intuition I'm sure a lot of mothers can relate you've got that voice it's like "Mm, there's something you know and then you speak to your friends and your friends are like or you know you go on the Facebook groups and they're like you know it's all normal it's all really normal you know I guess everybody has different experience but this was mine and um you know and so I was like oh but no like there's just there's something and and so anyway she got to about I think it was four and she was really struggling in social situations and I was really starting to notice it. And, um, yeah, I, I knew that it was time to to try and get some professional advice around it. And, you know, I'm so glad that I did. You know, it doesn't make my daughter any less or, you know, and, and I think I processed that in the um, throughout her first four years. Like I processed because there was that initial kind of, oh, my God, She's going to be labelled and different and all of those things. And, um, you know, in those first four years, you know, I started my own trauma work, I guess, as well. So I was able to reflect and kind of realise that different is actually really, really good, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I start to kind of feel into that, like the gifts and the magic. So by the time it got to, um, you know, the diagnosis and, um, you know, getting into the system and all those sorts of things that can be really overwhelming. Yeah. I was really, you know, I was really in a place of, you know, acceptance and, you know, it, but it was an emotional kind of you go through those things as mothers, like what if she really struggles here? What if she really struggles there, you know? Um, so, yeah, just being with all the feels, you know, around that and and, you know, and all of her feels and, and yeah, so yeah, it was a an emotional roller coaster and a massive growth journey. And um, yeah, she's yeah, she's a very special one though. And you know, it's been about finding her gifts and finding her um, what she loves. And um, yeah, like she's been my biggest teacher ultimately. So. Yes, I resonate with that. My daughter is the same for me. I always say it feels like. I learn from her all the time um, mm. and she just opens my eyes to more and more perspectives and all sorts of stuff. And I, I just love that. Yeah. Um, 
But I mm-hmm. wondered, you know, I loved how you said about like looking for the things that she loves and those gifts of hers. And I think this is something that's so powerful in this affirming shift that's happening now is that we're seeing neurodivergence as a gift and as this, um, there are capacities and capabilities that the neurodivergent mind has sometimes that you know other people don't have and we can see this as a real positive if we foster that and I wondered what your experience has been like in terms of like school or you know in early education even the community are you finding that that is being supported and if so how but also are there areas that are maybe sort of lacking yeah yeah so um you know she's just she's an amazing teacher and um you know and she so she's currently at daycare and you know it was initially a little bit tricky because she's very you know she masks very well she's been in daycare since she was you know one like she's you know she's a very so she wants to be very social so um she's you know a very very good at masking um so it was really hard to kind of get them to recognize that there were things that she needed, you know, assistance with and there were things that maybe, you know, um, rather than kind of pushing that maybe we looked for the things that, um, you know, that she's really good at and those sorts of things um, yeah. because it's important for me to be really neuroaffirming and mm. um, to really honour her and her autonomy and her deep wisdom. You know, she's not unlike anyone else. You know, I speak of the feminine mysteries and she's this little feminine coming out and going, you know, I've got this deep mystery and this deep wisdom. So um, so it was um, a little challenging for me to try and relay that and it wasn't yeah, kind of so. until um, we got her OT on board, who is amazing, um, and she's neuroaffirming and she was able to go to the daycare and have a chat with them and, you know, they've just completely done a 180, um, you know, like they have really kind of set up regulation spaces and, you know, uh, as a nervous system trauma therapist, I'm pretty well versed on tracking someone's nervous system and the value yeah. of that and the yeah. regulation. Um, so I was able to provide, um, you know, that information. These are the signs when Ariella... Um, is outside of her window this is when she's getting outside of her window you know like this is these are the things that bring her back when she's like this and this and this um and you know they took that on board like they really took it on board and um you know they're quite a um quite young kind of educators so they were really ready to learn which was really so amazing for me because I'm a single mum you know so I don't have a lot of that support other than friends and um, a few family members so to have yeah. that support on board that it's not just all me because, you know, as a trauma therapist as well, I can get so over-involved and, you know, be trying yeah. to be the, all the things to her. But, you know, it's so good for her and for me that there are people outside that she's able to co-regulate with as well. Yeah. You know? So. And she's so lucky to have you as a mama, like to to be able to like foster those things and that wisdom in her from such a young age where, mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of us go through this process of like feeling like there are parts of our femininity that we have to squash and that we can't be vulnerable in because we need to get by in this sort of rat race, man eat man kind of world. Um, So what a blessing to have someone who holds that space from such a young age. Yeah. And then, you know, like I'm not perfect. Sometimes I get caught up in my own, you know, I've got a lot going on and and, you know, like I might be outside my own window and, you know, she's, mm. you know, she's where she is and I, you know, I don't react perfectly, but I always repair, you know, and yeah. like, but that's the thing. She, she's the biggest teacher and she will always call me out when I'm not present. She will always call me out when I'm not, you know, um, yeah, just able to hold space for her and her emotions and that's like oh you know <laughs> that's yes. my power. and you know that's that's her gift like she's a yeah. big healer and she's a big like you know you know she's got some you know possible PDA um stuff going on so you know it's like no this is how I feel this is what yeah. I want you know and and so it makes me stop and get really present to that, you know. So she's, you know, she, yeah, like I said, she teaches me to, we work together, you know, we're a team. Yes. Yeah. That's so powerful, I think. And I think it's a really great message for a lot of parents 
that, and especially, you know, you mentioned PDA and I do a lot of work in this space now, um, and that actually giving children autonomy, there's been like this weird misconception probably from like when we were kids and stuff that like kids need to be seen and not heard and they just get told what to do by their parents mm-hmm. and they're not allowed to like make any of their own decisions because, yeah. you know, like that's how we were sort of parented, right, in this weird yeah way of just do as you're told and nothing was ever explained. And now it's like these kids are coming through for us that are sort of really shaking those foundations and being like, well, I'm actually a human being with having a human experience. Like I am, I am my own unique being and I'm, and I'm here. And just because I don't have the wisdom of years doesn't mean that I don't bring my own wisdom to this experience Mm -hmm. where let me have a say in this. Right. Um, And recently I heard, I think it was Chris, Dina Keeble, someone recoined the term PDA from pathological demand avoidance to pervasive demand for autonomy. Mm, I saw that. Yeah. And I was just yeah. like, like, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. you know, and I think it's beautiful that you mentioned about being a team because I think that's, we can really get a lot out of it if we as parents see our children as teammates rather yeah. than people that we're trying to control or yeah even train which sounds just awful um but that (laughs) leads me to another question about your own neurodivergence because I know Mm. that came as sort of like a a flow-on effect from learning about your daughter um so can you share with us a bit about that yeah of course so um you know as you were talking I was really just thinking about my own childhood as a neurodivergent child you know and you know as a deeply feeling child um with a lot of wisdom as well, like a connection to my intuition at mm. such a young age, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah, it was it was that it was what I heard, you know. Like, yeah, you're too much. You're too, you know, too vocal. You feel too much. All of those things, yeah. um, and you know that kind of shame thing to to try and get you to be a person that they think you need to be in this world and. And that's just, I think, you know, and no judgment, like, but that's just how parenting um, was taught, I think, back in those days. Like, it's yeah. so crazy to think about, you know, that that was how parenting was done. And I get, you know, where that kind of comes from from a trauma perspective. I, I really understand that, but it doesn't make it any easier for the people yeah. going through it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I yeah, yeah. certainly experienced a lot of trauma from that, you know, being this deeply sensitive woman who was so open to this world um, and then just, yeah, experienced the harshness of it. And and so, you know, I, I was diagnosed with um, ADHD um, and possibly PDA as well. I've, I've got to go through an official diagnosis, but with a few different learning um learning disabilities as well and I always forget what they're called because that's what one of them is about that's what you forget words I Um, love that dysgraphia um dysgraphia dysphasia I think it's dysphasia Mm. and and mild dyslexia and auditory processing disorder so quite a few things um I was diagnosed with when Ariella was diagnosed because they ask you a whole bunch of questions right and I wasn't expecting this (laughs) like I was just thinking I'm going in um, you know, my daughter's going to get diagnosed, but I was diagnosed as well, you know, quite loosely. I have to go and get an official diagnosis. But it answered so many questions for me. Like it just opened up a whole world. I really struggled at school. You know, I couldn't learn the way, um, you know, they were trying to tell me to learn. So I became the naughty girl, you know, and um, I was constantly sent to the back of the class. I was constantly in trouble. Um, you know, I was constantly misunderstood at home, at school. Um, and I just, yeah, it was really, really hard. So, um, you know, I've had a lot of, to clear a lot of trauma from that. Because, yeah, you know, yeah, like it was really, really hard. And um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, that journey to returning to who I am rather than who the world wants me to be, then I'm constantly doing every day, you know? Mm. Like I'm constantly peeling back the layers and, um, you know, like, yeah, questioning who I am in this world. So, yeah, but it's been powerful and it's been, um, 
you know, affirming to who I am and, you know, my own gifts and, um, yeah, like I can't, maybe I'm not great at that, but like I'm freaking fantastic at all this other stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's been one of, you know, um, just learning more about myself, which has been so powerful, you know, really, really yeah. powerful. I often talk about that process of like unmasking. It's like, you know, we built up this front of who we thought we needed to be in the world. And then all of a sudden it's like, actually, no, I'm like a kick-ass human being underneath all of this. Yeah. So I can take all this off. Um, Did you, do you feel like you had that experience of feeling like you had to mask and, and like create something other than who you were? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I experienced it as a real like as a, as a nervous system trauma therapist, it's a real kind of form on a piece yeah. space of the nervous system that mm-hmm. still might kick in in family situations and those sorts of things. But I've, because of my work, my trauma work and my ability to track my own system, I can kind of see when it's coming in and, mm-hmm. and you know, not get it perfect because, like, we've got wounds, right, <laughs> like, you know, and this is survival, like, you know, sometimes it comes up but, you know, there's an awareness around it now and, you know, and there are gifts in the masking too, right? Like I became a fantastic actress, you know? Yes. So like, you know, like, yeah, it just is what it is. But at the end of the day, like um, I'm so much more able to have a relationship with my body, I think. Yeah. Is is it? And um, for my body to tell me when I'm in a with truth and I think that's been invaluable you know because the mind can be so connected to our experiences and all of that stuff but our body never lies yeah Mm. on that note like in terms of like your your body's experience because I'm a big believer that oftentimes we get really disconnected from the body and you know, one of the ways as an OT that I try to bring that connection back in is through really beginning to understand our sensory preferences Mm. and the things that feel good to the nervous system and the things that don't. Have you found that there's been particular things for you or for your daughter that have been really fundamental in helping your nervous system to regulate or even things that some people, you know, like for me, you know, I move all the time. I fidget, I fiddle. Mm. I'm always leaning on my head in my hands. Like, and it took me a really long time to be like, no, you can do that. Like, just do it if that's what you need yeah. to do. And even if people are like, why are you on the floor? Like, that's a bit weird. It's like, well, that's what my body needs right now. So thanks, you know. Yeah. Um, what's that been like for you guys? Yeah, and I think it's really important to, um, yeah, be, be giving ourselves that permission, isn't it, really? Because how many times, and I guess to reflect again on the journey through school as a neurodivergent child Mm -hmm. like you know let's sit up straight do you know stop rocking all of those things when that's exactly what you might need in that situation and Mm -hmm. and I think for me like um it just it's really dependent on where I'm at in my nervous system um as to what I need like I might need more vigorous movement or I might need something really nurturing right just like a touch of the face or um you know a really soft furry cushion you know yes. like because it, it's often I am needing nurturing um it's a pretty um yeah a pretty general thing that I need usually mm. you know that nurturing kind of sensation um so yeah those are some of the things or a nice blanket over me mm. um you know and and just kind of really getting that sense or feeling my skin even just you know touching my hand and and feeling my skin you know um is is that touch is a really important part of me. Yeah, just finding that self-regulation. And, you know, I I think my daughter is similar. You know, she loves that touch. She loves things soft. But sometimes, you know, when she's in bed, she's like, I'm so uncomfortable, I'm so uncomfortable. And I'm like, do you want to just take your clothes off? And that feeling of like the blanket on the naked body, you know, is just so, like, she just melts into it and she's like, Oh, you know, so just finding those in any, you know, I think that exploration, because it's never the same, is it? Like, yeah, something might work one moment and then it doesn't the next, right? So 
yeah, like just exploring and, you know, and, and play. I love play. Like I love to play and find things through play. And, um, yeah, so um, we're always kind of exploring together what might feel good. And, you know, you, you touch it and it's like, oh, no, that feels weird. <laughs> but it felt yeah. good yesterday, right? So, yeah, like just always kind of seeking. Mm. I love that you mentioned play because it always gets spoken about in relation to children and like, you know, children's primary occupation and stuff. But like play and being curious and trying new things and being silly and, you know, all the things that children do in play is so powerful for adults as well. And I think it's sad mm-hmm. that we lose play and it's become yeah. this like weird modern culture thing that adults don't play anymore. Um, mm-hmm. So I love that you brought that up because I think in a lot of particularly the neurodivergent adults that I speak to, they're like, oh, some of the things I like are really childish. And I was like, who said? Like, who said that it had to be childish for you to yeah. enjoy finger painting or like whatever it is? Mm, yeah. Um, and I think getting back to those things that just bring that gleam in the eye and make us feel alive, regardless of what it is, is so yeah. powerful, especially in adulthood. Yeah, definitely. I think it's so important to be able to connect to that part of ourselves, right? Like I always talk about. Um, you know, curiosity is the opposite to trauma, you know. So when we can be in that space of curiosity, we're not in trauma, you know. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's, it's healing. It's powerful. And, you know, I, I play has been instrumentally probably the best thing for my daughter as a PDA girl yeah. to turn, be able to turn things into, you know, depending on where she's in her nervous system. If she's too far gone, don't try and play or, you know, <laughs> you're in trouble. But for, for the most part, you know, play will, you know, um, implement it in a really respectful way will be, you know, received really well. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you, what advice would you want to give to someone who has had a similar experience to you or both as a parent but also as, you know, a neurodivergent person yourself? Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess, you know, like don't be afraid to stand out. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to explore who you truly are and, you know, to, to step into the unknown because that is the biggest gift. So, yeah, trust. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, that's such a big one. Yeah. Um, do you think your own neurodivergence and your discovery of that has influenced the way you work now? Yeah, definitely. It's just given me more of a respect for people, I think, and more of a a curiosity, I think, for people. Um, You know, as humans, we can tend to assume things about people. Um, So it's really opened up this whole kind of, um, in a deeper way, I've always, you know, seek to really clarify and communicate really well. It's, you know, part of having integrity is what I value. But I think it's really, you know, um, yeah, just open me up to um, to really see people for who they are and what they can bring and really seek clarification on that, you know, rather than assuming. So, yeah, yeah it's given me, you know, as a trauma therapist, um, you know, it's given me, um, yeah, just an ability to hold better space for people, I think. Yes. I love mm-hmm. that. I resonate with that too. And I love that you're talking about like that trauma being a trauma therapist to being trauma informed and educated, because I honestly think that when we're working with neurodivergent people, particularly I'm finding those who have been later diagnosed or those who were diagnosed as children, but like had a very behaviorist approach applied to them mm-hmm. and similar, these individuals have experienced trauma simply yeah. by way of their neurology being invalidated by society. And to a lot of other people, that doesn't look like a trauma because we think of trauma as, you know, things that are physically dramatic, for example, but I think there's a lot of trauma going on and the, and the body's responses. I I believe this masking can be a very traumatized response and hence why it's not so easy to just unmask, like just take it off, just stop doing that thing. And it's like, yeah, but my nervous system thinks I have to to be safe. Yeah. I think, um, you know, a lot of the time I think neurodivergent people, they don't think they that they have trauma or that they're carrying trauma, but I think maybe even just gently exploring and being curious with someone who can hold that space and who is trauma informed and um, who can have that 
approach to therapy, whether it's an OT or a psychologist or someone like yourself, I think that level of validation for the individual, whether they're a child or an adult, is is almost invaluable, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And I think you're so right. Like people just see trauma and they're like, no, I haven't been through a car accident or I haven't been through, um, you know, domestic abuse or all of those things that are really blanket traumatic terms, right? Yeah. But the way trauma is officially, um, you know, diagnosed is um you know were you feeling alone when you went through something right the disconnection part is the trauma and then on the as well it's was it moving quickly now we know as neurodivergent people everything moves quickly you know like everything is moving quickly so of course we're going to feel alone in the world because we're different and everything's moving quickly trauma you know so yeah, whether it be, you know, we, we can really minimise ourselves and say, you know, the time that person said that to me wasn't, you know, like, you know, I just need to get over it and do all that kind of bypass stuff. But, you know, we need to kind of honour that and, and, and what how that feels in our body and, you know, and really, yeah, start to kind of yeah, nurture that part of ourselves that didn't get that, you know, that support and didn't get that capacity, that nervous system to hold us and go, yeah, I get it. That was so full on. Yeah. And I think when you find someone that you trust who can like help walk you through that process Mm. so that you can learn in that affirming way that your adult perspective or adult self can help heal the younger parts of you or other parts of you who did get stuck in where those experiences happened and that we have the power to do that. Like, um, you know, we are ultimately, we are self-empowered when we find Mm -hmm. space to, to explore that and to be curious and to be vulnerable. And um, that's what I'm loving so much about this community that we're creating because there are just so many beautiful people coming out of everywhere, offering support and, um, you know, allowing for us to share our truths and our stories. And um, I guess learning that we're not alone. There are so yeah. many people with these similar experiences mm. that have had them swept under the rug by society or who've been made to feel less than and therefore they haven't spoken out. But I think the more of us that come out and are like, oh, yeah, like, hi, me too, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's that sense of belonging and that sense of no longer being alone. And I think in that itself, it's there's healing in that and in the storytelling and you know. Yeah. yeah. It's you know, I really believe I'm a big believer in that connection can be so healing, you know. Um, connection itself without anything else can be healing, you know. Um, and so one of the first things that I did, and it kind of wasn't even for me, but was when I realized, you know, my daughter was having some signs um I joined a lot of you know neurodiverse groups online um and um yeah just surrounded myself with people that were in a similar space because yeah like I'm such you know <clears throat> through my trauma work and I understand the value of connection and I understand the value of having people around you community that really understand you and what I didn't expect was to find a lot of women who you know like whether it was similar to me as well, you know, because I didn't understand yeah. my own neurodiversity at that point. And so I was seeing posts of women and they were explaining, you know, things and I'm like, oh, my God, me too, you know, and it was just so healing to hear that. Like, yeah, it was so powerful. So, yeah, spaces like your Steph, they're just invaluable, you know, people that places that people can come and just be vulnerable and authentic are invaluable and rare in this in this world, which is part of my passion about recreating these spaces too yeah I love it um is there anything else that you wanted to share in particular about the work you're doing about your experience um and your advice that you have for other people or anything that I guess you know part of this is told that space for people to share their own story and how that might be healing for other people so um Mm. yeah anything else yeah I think I've shared everything, you know. The questions have been so beautiful. We've kind of, yeah, weaved in and through them. And I think, yeah, 
what I've what we've gone over here has just been perfect. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's oh, um, you're so welcome. It's been beautiful to talk about this. You know, I um I I think this is the first time I've really officially kind of come out and spoken about this, and it feels empowering. So thank you. Oh, good. I'm so proud. Of so yeah. proud of That's amazing. Yeah. Um, tell us where people can find you, like if they want to check you out on the socials and some of the work you're doing, because I know. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people that will find, especially this, this feminine empowerment stuff, like really powerful. So where where can we find you? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm newly on TikTok, just figuring my way out the videos, having fun. <laughs> um, so at Zara Celine Intuitive, you'll find me on all of those platforms. So come and find me. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your feelings. I'd love to, yeah, I'd just love to connect amazing mm. and Zara is also a member of um the Facebook group that I set up um the neurodiversity empowerment movement and um yeah she's been a great member of that group so thank you so much for being there and for contributing mm. and holding space for people because uh, I think it's really nice to have those that are willing to kind of be the loud ones in the group sometimes you know just mm-hmm. to kind of bring a bit and I really appreciate um you doing that and sharing what you do so thank you for being here and being vulnerable it was such a pleasure to hold space for you I am so keen to learn more from you about um the feminine mysteries and stuff I think I'm gonna have to get around some of these groups so hopefully we can see some other listeners um be part of that too yes yes definitely I'd love to have you I'd be so honored and anyone else who feels the call yeah let's do this I feel like I'm creating an army of women who you know like are just so in touch with their feelings and yeah it's, yes it's yeah. What the world needs, so right? needed yeah that's right yeah yeah amazing well thank you so much Sarah again I really appreciate your time and I can't wait to learn more from you yeah thank you and I can't wait to learn more from you I love watching you and all that you do so yeah you're amazing. Oh, thank you so much mm. All right, lovely. Bye.